So, Darut, thank you so much for taking your time. We are here at Amsterdam Dance Event, and we are very curious to learn more about you today. Nice. All right. Ask me anything. <laughs> Uh, first of all, can you share something that your fans don't know, like maybe a hidden talent of yours or a little known fact? Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know what is a hidden talent of mine. Okay, so I'm a dance music producer. Uh, I don't know how to dance really that well. It's always like when I'm on a dance floor, I need to have something to twist, like the knobs of the mixer yeah. or whatever. But uh, when I was younger, in high school and... and um, College, I used to go to these traditional dances in Finland. So I know a little bit of uh, waltz and foxtrot and tango, which might be a fact that nobody knows about. Wonderful. I mean, I will teach an electronic dance class tomorrow if you want to come oh, wow. <laughs> at the Q Factory. Maybe I should. <laughs> uh, further on, I mean, of course, we all know your most famous track, Sandstorm. When you produced this track, did you have any idea of how iconic it would become? Well, I mean, I sort of thought that uh, I'll now sit down and produce it. And then uh, in 2023 at ADE, I'm going to be talking to you about it. So that was kind of my plan all along. Perfect. <laughs> Seriously, I was a hobbyist that had one synthesizer, a couple of computer programs, and I wasn't considering or thinking about myself as a musician even at all at that point. So it was just uh, messing about and I don't know, I got lucky. And then I, then I jumped on it and, and uh, ran with it. Wonderful. Yeah. So you're from Finland. Mm. Finland has produced many very good electronic music artists. Mm. How do you think your Finnish heritage has affected your career or influenced your music? I get the, this question here and there. And it's, it's difficult. Like A lot of people think, me included, at least a little bit, that our long, dark winters have something to do with it. Like we, uh, we struggle to survive through the cold and dark winter and uh, it might make us melancholic. That's maybe why traditionally, at least, our music, both in Finland and then also the current music still, like trancey stuff and dance music, could be melancholic and minor keys. I don't know if that's true, but at least it feels like a logical explanation for it. Other than that, dance music in general is quite global in a sense, unless you have the lyrics written in a particular language other than English. So, so I think for me, not being a typical Finnish artist was that my stuff was instrumental in the beginning, and then I started making stuff with English lyrics or samples first, and then, I mean, these days I, I use vocalists a lot, and that in itself doesn't naturally tie me to fin Finnish crowd only, but like a dance music as a global audience, so I don't know. But I'm very proud of my Finnish background, my heritage, and uh, anytime I can sort of bring it up, I bring Finland up in interviews, and, and also my boys like Super 8 and Tab and Orkidea, Jokto, Hompol. There's many, many, many very talented and amazing producers and DJs coming from Finland. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> so you are very well known for your high energy life sets and performances. And you have played shows all over the world. What was one performance that like really stands out to you in your mind? Uh, you know what, this question up until 2016, 2017 was really hard because it's hard to say that city, that club, because that kind of means that everything else wasn't that great then. And I would not ever want to do that to any promoter or any, any crowd. But this is something that I'm very biased about. I played a New Year's Eve gig in Finland, New Year's Eve 2016 to 2017. And I got to change the year with Sandstorm, actually, and in front of about 80,000 people in the city of Helsinki. And what also made it so significant was that that started the 100-year celebrations or the year of 100-year celebrations of our independence. Oh, wow. so, so I had the honor of being the first piece of music that people heard that celebration year. It, it was very meaningful. But because it was in Finland, it was my home country and such a big event, now I can say that that was the best gig ever. And I'm not really, you know, if somebody gets pissed off about that, then it's their fault, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I understand it. Like, it yeah. must have uh, a lot of emotion for you. Absolutely, yeah. The actual gig was kind of like a normal gig. I played it, I performed, I saw the crowd there. It was massive, but, but I've done big crowds before. But then, uh, like two hours later, 
people started sending me clips, my friends who were in the crowd or who saw it on TV, and I was, you know, kind of calmed down at the hotel, and I cried like a little baby seeing that. It was so emotional. And one big thing was that I was looking at the crowd, but the fireworks were kind of like behind the stage, and I never saw them really well at all. But then I saw the whole thing together, like the TV show, because it was live broadcast, and that was just like... Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, it was really cool. So your career has spanned over several decades already, and you've witnessed like real significant changes in the industry. Mm. What are some of the uh, most positive developments for you, and are there any concerns? I think, I think internet in general obviously has changed everything, not only for music, but all kinds of things and services. If you look at only the positive sides, being a dance music or music lover in general today, it's the best time ever, you know. It's free or almost free to get any track in the world on your, you know, mobile device or computer, your earbuds, anytime, basically. And so I don't know if there's anything better than that. If you're a music uh, consumer, if you're a music producer, it's kind of the same in the sense that the technology is so advanced now and it's so affordable. You know, if you can afford a phone, basically, you can make music. Anybody can make music today. And that access to generating something, whether it's actual pieces of music or visuals or combined, having that access to creating arts, that's amazing. There are flip sides to that, but maybe we don't need to talk about that. We'll just think about the positives. I like that, yeah. yes. <laughs> We're at ADE. It's good times. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Are there any projects that you're currently working on that we are like we can look forward to right now honestly i'm here to promote my upcoming album that's coming out on the 3rd of november it's called together and that project as far as me being a producer that was done now two months ago or so which i'm happy about because it was quite the undertaking but i i have new tracks coming out still probably next year i don't know exactly yet when but i'm already working on some new tracks and new collaborations and I'm looking into 25 kind of already because it's going to be like a big year for me in a sense it's going to be a 25 year anniversary thing for me so we're maybe figuring out a tour around that as well and uh, probably new music and you know sort of the usual but but right now I'm actually I've taken not time off fully but I haven't been in a studio too much in the last month or two and uh, actually, after ADE, after I recover from this, my uh, my plan is to start working on the next new tracks and see what, what we can come up with next year. Wonderful. We're looking forward to listening to those tracks then. Yeah. And to finish it off, I have one question. Mm. What's the track ID? <laughs> Nobody seems to know. I, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. You You probably didn't get it the same way that I did, but it was so funny when people started asking about what is that song on my channels and it was referring to sandstorm and first couple of months i didn't understand why they were asking that because the meme was going over my head and obviously somebody at some point explained what the meme was about and i'm all quite happy about that thing but today when you talk about a track id obviously not everything refers to sandstorm so it's an interesting thing to play new tracks because that is the only last thing today that is kind of a mystery. Like every every DJ kind of has access to every track today, unless it's something that I made today and didn't put it out yet. So I'm holding my track IDs, not Sandstorm, but the others close to my heart until the release date usually. And uh, I think all of us uh, artists are these days because that's the only way you can now differentiate you yourself meaning track selection wise wonderful yeah. well thank you so much thank and you. now we know <laughs>